So we're going to take a look at a brand new topic, uh, finite state machines. So we may as well start by asking what are finite state machines. And the key is, is really in the name. They are a way of controlling a system using a set number of states. And because there are a set number and a finite number, as one might say, um, we can be very specific about how they will respond to every different situation. Practically, they give us a way of thinking about different problems, analyzing and, and modeling systems and designing solutions. And they've got a, a variety of different applications of, as we'll see later. But here is a really simple finite state machine. What you can see is that in blue we have two states and in green we have some transition between those two states those transitions will have some conditions on them and they may not transition between a state at all they may transition from a state to itself but in general we have circles for states and arrows showing the transitions um, for example a really simple finite state machine might be a model for a physical door the door has two states at this point in time, open and closed, and the transitions just describe what happens when we apply one of our standard actions or something to, to this door. So if we pull a door when it's already open, um, using this example on the, on the left, um, if we pull a door when it's open, we follow this one here, and we find the door stays open. Once it's open, if you keep pulling it, it's gonna stay open. Um, by contrast, uh, what happens when we push a door when it's open? Well, we follow this transition here and we move over to the door being closed. Just like before, if we push the door when it's closed, we stay in the same state and it's only when we pull it, we make this transition back to the state over here. So two straight, two states, two possible actions, push and pull, and four possible transitions there. Now, obviously for something like a door, it's probably not really helpful to describe it using a finite state machine. It's too simple. But finite state machines can rapidly lead into complex behavior, which makes them really useful for simulating complex systems or controlling AI in games. For example, let's just add one more scenario to our door. Let's add a lock. Now we've got three different states, open, closed, and locked. And all we have to do is describe what effect the turning the key parameter has on each stage. And you can hopefully see that this is slowly getting our diagram more complicated. Hopefully some of you are also thinking, well, hang on, that is a massive oversimplification. Doors aren't just open or closed. Sometimes they can be halfway. Sometimes you can, they can be multi-way doors. Sometimes they may only have keys that you can turn in a particular direction. And that brings up one of the other main points about finite state machines. They are abstractions. They are simplifications of an ideal goal. But if we come back to this idea of having a set number of states and a set number of inputs, we can imagine a table like this. It's almost like a truth table for our finite state machine. We start on the left hand side with a list of all of our different states, this column here. And then we go through and we iterate through our three different senses, uh, our three different inputs, pull, push and turn key. And we just describe what happens to our system when it is in this state and we apply an action to it. It takes us to this state. So if we follow the diagram down the bottom, if the door is open and we pull on it, we stay in the open state. If the door is open and we push on it, we move to the closed state. If the door is open and we turn the key, we stay in the open state. And so we can imagine going through and filling out this table for every possible state and every possible interaction. For a three state, three input system, it's not too bad. It looks like this. Here's the completed table of different scenarios that we had. But as we add more states and more inputs, this table grows rapidly. Just to come come back to give you some examples for our door we neglected to describe how far open the door was how big it is what kind of key those are all levels of detail we didn't worry about because finite machines state machines are abstractions and so the key here is we're trying to capture the significant aspects of behavior and omitting all the unimportant details. And this harkens back to our modeling kind of ethic from the very first lecture, which is we will make our model as complicated as it needs to be to reproduce the significant aspects of the behavior, but no more complex than that. For another example, just to stress this point, here's a finite state machine describing the flow 
and navigation through an e-commerce website. So you can see you might start with a cart state and then by pushing the buy now button you move on to address details and then next and next and next can take you through that. This just points out that finite state machines as well as describing systems are great tools for designing them. This is a finite state machine specifically for designing navigation through a an e-commerce website, some kind of standard cart. And you'll notice here that not all finite state machines form con uh, uh, closed loops like the one that we saw previously. We've now got um, a lone state on the right hand side where we can end up in and we cannot get out of that state, which is good for an e-commerce website, but probably not great if you're trying to describe something like a door. So the formal definition is a pro of a finite state machine is a program whose output depends only on its input um, and its current state. The key being finite state machines can only be in one state at a time and their transitions between states are triggered by inputs.